Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're creating a looping spiral effect in Cinema 4D. This video was brought to you by Skillshare, where you can get access to over 25,000 full courses on a huge range of subjects. The classes are project-based and teachers take you through all the steps in creating each project and when you're done, you can share your work with teachers and the student community for feedback and support. We've actually got three CG Shortcuts courses on there now, with new courses being released regularly, covering a bunch of stuff we don't usually go into on YouTube. So if you want to test out Skillshare, there's a link below for a free two-month trial that will give you access to the entire catalogue of courses, including the courses from CG Shortcuts so you can see if it's right for you. Now let's get back to the tutorial. So this tutorial is going out to Diego Elias Dos Santos, who's one of our amazing patrons over on Patreon. He wanted to know how to create this. And I couldn't find the original artist who made this, but if you do know, let me know and I'll credit them down below. So let's hop into Cinema 4D and see what we can come up with. So to start off, let's come up here and we'll grab a helix and we want this guy spiraling upwards instead. So we'll come over to the plane and we'll change that to XZ. All right, let's zoom out a bit. And we want this helix to be a bit taller than that. We actually want six spirals in here. So we'll start with the height. Let's make this 1000 centimeters. Okay, that's looking good. Then to get this spiraling a few more times, we actually need to change the end angle degrees. So we know 360 degrees is one revolution and we know that we need six revolutions. So we can actually just type in times or the asterisk key and six and hit enter. And now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And you can have as many spirals as you like, but it's important to remember if we go over to the top view, your spiral needs its end and start to be in line with each other. And you can probably see what I mean a bit better if we go back to our perspective view. You can see how both ends of the spiral are lining up with each other. Okay, so now we need to make a second spiral. So we can just grab this guy and hold control on the keyboard to drag out a copy. And we want our second helix to bulge out like this. So with it selected, we'll come up here to our deformers menu and we want to grab the bulge deformer. And if we hold shift, it'll automatically apply itself as a child. And it's also fit itself quite nicely to our helix. So to make our bulge deformer bulge, all we need to do is bring up the strength. Let's make it an even 150. All right, now that we've got our bulge, we don't need to see this deformer anymore. So let's just go and turn that off. Okay, so the plan is to get one continuous spiraling object. But if we zoom in a bit, we actually want this to continue spiraling this way rather than spiraling back the other way. So we just need to reverse our second spiral and they should hopefully link up with each other. So let's go and grab helix number two again. And you might notice there's a little reverse option down here, but if we switch that on, it actually reverses the points on the spline itself rather than the angle of our spiral. So let's turn that off. And the way to reverse the angle is pretty simple. All we need to do is put a negative value in here. And now you can see that guy is spiraling around the other way. And now it almost looks like one continuous spiraling object. And we're going to combine these in just a sec. But before we do, we could probably make this shape a little bit more interesting if it has a few less spirals. Rather than six full rotations, I think it might look pretty cool if we just have four. So again, we'll just type in 360 times four. And it's gone back the other way. We just need to make sure we've got a negative number in here. Cool, so that's matching up again and it's looking a little bit more interesting. So now we wanna combine both of these helixes into a single spline. So let's grab both of these and we'll right click and say current state to object. And that's created these two new splines for us. And because we're going to be joining these, we just wanna check how many points we've got along these splines. If we switch over to point mode, we can see these splines are pretty dense with points and that's gonna make keeping them smooth or editing them pretty difficult. So let's delete our two splines and we'll grab our helixes again. This time, so we don't get such dense splines, 
We're just going to tweak the intermediate points down here. Let's change that from adaptive to none. And you can see now our splines have a lot less segments. It is a bit low res and it will look a little bit jagged, but we should be able to smooth this out a bit later on. And we could even simplify these even more by bringing the subdivision down. And I think a value of about 50 should work for us. We really only need a very basic outline of the shape. And I think this should be fine. So let's come back over here and right click again and back down to current state to object. And that's looking better. So we don't need these helixes anymore. So we'll grab them and hit Alt G on the keyboard to put them in a group. Then we can just hide that for now. You can see if we click on our two new splines, we've now got a much more simple looking shape. So now we wanna combine both splines together. So we get one continuous spline. So with both of these selected, we'll right click. And this time we want connect objects and delete. And that's now collapsed both of those into one single spline. However, if we zoom into the point where the two splines meet, you can see here, we've got a gap between these two points. So let's come up here and grab our rectangle selection tool and we'll click and drag to select both of these points. Then the easiest way to join these up is to right click and right down the bottom, we'll click on weld. Then we just need to click a spot where we want both of these points to weld together. And it's as easy as that. And we can just test it by grabbing our move tool and we'll just select this one point. And now when we move it up, everything's joined together. Okay, so there should be another piece at the bottom down here that's also not joined up. So let's just do the same thing again. We'll grab our rectangle selection tool, grab both of those, right click and weld. And we'll weld this point right here. However, if we test this and try to move one of these points, you'll notice it's still broken apart. And that's just because we need a closed spline. So we'll grab this guy and under the object tab, we've got the close spline option here. So we just need to turn that on and that's filled that gap for us. So now we just need to right click on this guy and we'll grab the weld again and we'll weld that down to this point. And if we try and test that guy, we're good. Okay, let's zoom out a bit and we'll just make sure this is looking nice and smooth. You can see we've got a slight point where they meet here. So we'll grab that and we might just bring it down a tad and we'll have a look from other angles. We just wanna make sure our spline is flowing smoothly. And we might just tidy up this guy at the bottom as well. We might just bring this one up ever so slightly. Something like that. Okay, so now we wanna give our spiral a bit of thickness. And to do that, we'll come up here and we want to use a sweep. And now we need a shape to sweep along our spline. So we'll come back up here and you can grab any shape you want, but we're gonna go with the trusty old circle. And that's a mighty big circle for our little spiral. So let's come over here and bring that radius down. I reckon something like 50 should be good. So now we wanna sweep our circle along our spline. So we'll grab our circle and make that a child of our sweep. Then we'll grab our spline and plonk that right here under the circle. And just like that, we've got our nice thick spiral. And now we come to the magic step that allows us to create this illusion. And it's really not as complicated as it looks. All we need to do is come up here and bring in a null. Then we'll come down here to its coordinate controls. And we need to rotate this guy in the Y axis, which I'm pretty sure is this control. Yep. So let's set a keyframe at zero on frame zero. And we might just extend our timeline while we're down here. Let's make it 50 frames long. Then we'll go along to the end here and we'll change this value to 360 degrees, giving us one full revolution. And we'll set a keyframe. Then we'll right click here and go to animation and show F curves. And then we wanna make this curve linear. So we'll hit control A on the keyboard to select both points like so. Then we'll click on this button. And now that's nice and straight. So we'll close that. And now if we play this back, our null is spinning, but we need to put our spiral into our null. So let's do that. And now if we hit play, there's our animation. The spirals look like they're going in opposite directions, but it's just an optical illusion. But before we finish this up, 
We could probably smooth this out to make it look a bit better. And the best way to do that is probably to grab our sweep and we'll come up here and add a subdivision surface. If you hold Alt when you bring that in, it should automatically apply itself like so. And now if we just frame this up and get a bit of an interesting camera angle, we'll hit play and we now have our looping spiraling effect. And you might want to come in here and tweak some of these points so you can get this all looking nice and smooth. All you need to do is hide the subdivision surface and the sweep. Then editing this guy should be nice and easy because we got rid of all those subdivisions before. So our spline is nice and tidy. Okay, let's turn those back on. And before we wrap this up, let's add a bit of color to this. We'll come down here and double click in the material palette to create a new material. Then we'll drag that material onto our subdivision surface. Then we'll come back down here and double click our material to open it in the material editor. Then we'll just move this guy out of the way. And under our color channel here, we'll click on this little arrow next to texture and we'll bring in a gradient. And at first our gradient is running along our object the wrong way. So let's click into that and we'll change the type from 2DU to 2DV. And now that gradient is wrapping around the length of our spiral. And I actually want this gradient to repeat down the length of our spline. So let's just move this over here and we'll grab our material tag. Then if we look down here, we've got some tiling options. We know we've got it in the V direction. So let's change this to 10 repetitions. And we'll move this back out of the way. And now we've got that gradient repeating 10 times along this spline. So let's make this a bit more colorful. Let's pop this open and we'll load in a color preset. And you've got loads to choose from here. I'm gonna go with the full colors one here. Now that is looking pretty colorful. Let's close that and we'll give it one final playback. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. As usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time. And as with all of our tutorials, if you wanna get your hands on the full render ready project files, which include all the final lighting, materials, and Octane render settings, you can get them from our Patreon page. Big shout out to this month's patrons for supporting the channel and allowing us to keep making tutorials. You guys are the best. That's it for now, I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you wanna see in the comment section below, or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.